Hello and welcome to part 34 of my Winds of Change video guide, this time Raid on Xinjia Monastery. Um, this is a fairly difficult quest. I would definitely recommend if you are interested in doing that using consumables to make it somewhat easier. Um, they're not mandatory. I'm actually mostly using them for these last few quests because I'm not having much time at the moment. And... Um, I don't want to risk failure, basically, so I'm just using them to make sure that I can get the um, get the quest recorded without spending too much time on, you know, retrying and um, going a different route or trying a different approach. Um, generally speaking, you can talk to Apprentice Z to occasionally get a consumable item that allows you to either turn it into a trap or a throwable explosive, essentially. Um, and before the um, before the enemies start spawning or attacking, you can just put down a bunch of traps on these two choke points you can see here. Um, I would definitely recommend not moving um, not moving away from this location. You need to keep Menlo alive. That's a fail condition if he dies. So um, yeah, I would suggest staying here. You will lose some of the headmasters, the ones that are positioned further out. Um, that's not an issue. It doesn't matter at all to the um, to the quest itself. And you can also keep positioning these guards around. I just tell, told them to follow me, so they uh, they basically just added to my party. I don't don't see any any great benefit in um, uh, in putting them in a specific location. Um, yeah, just just do as I did basically. Um, yeah, aside from that, keep keep in mind that those fire bombs you can get are fairly powerful. They do a lot of damage, so um, keep using them, I guess. Now, as you as you get them and use them, um, and you get your own skill bar back, um, the issue is that you get uh, you get recharge on all of your skills. So they are, they all basically begin their recharge time. Which is fine for short recharging skills, but for ones that have a longer recharge time, it um, is a bit troublesome because you end up not being able to use them. So that's something to bear in mind, especially if you're playing with multiple characters. Um, you should pay attention to what each character's build is and when deciding who does the firebombs, basically. But they are very, very useful because of um, the amount of damage they do, so I would suggest, uh, suggest using them. Now, from the right here, from this... Uh, side where I'm currently fighting, there will usually be a bunch of Mesmer spawning and these Sensali Mesmers can have panic and um, because of how many allies you have standing around here, panic can be incredibly devastating so that's something to, to really look out for and um, just be aware of. You can't really do much against panic because you'd need a party-wide hex removal, which there really isn't anything decent for that. Um, and also, obviously, a lot of hex removal will get interrupted by panic itself, so just something to be aware of. But um, just just keep it in mind, usually panic will not be a huge issue, but if you get unlucky, um, it might be worthwhile to spread out a little bit, um, especially if you're not alone and you have multiple real players along for the ride. Um, aside from that, there's really just a, a bunch of um, waves spawning from from those those two directions, um, and these are the only two directions you will have to defend. And so um, it's it's not terribly um, complicated, but because the enemy groups are fairly large and um, have decent builds. They can still pose quite a threat, especially when um, when you get unlucky in the enemy's position, a panic. Well, that can um, that can cause a party wipe. When I did this the first time around on my, um, my other character, I think it was the mesmer. Um, everything had been going fine until the very last wave, and then just one of the mesmers got a lucky panic off, and my party was just torn to pieces. Um, so that, that is a, a real danger. Aside from that, these Sensali are decent, they have decent builds, but there's nothing super dangerous about any of them. I would definitely suggest focusing on the Mesmers. And they don't all have panic. There are some Mesmers that have, I think, an illusion build, and some that are, um, I think they use a blood magic build, 
mostly taking advantage of fast casting to get around the long casting times. But um, yeah, the, the Panic Mesmers are definitely something to be avoided. And yeah, as you can see, I keep using the um, the consumables here to just get an edge. You can put down the, the, the trap mode of them and they last for, I believe, 90 seconds, which basically means while you have downtime and aren't fighting anything, you can just put down a bunch of traps and... Um, they do, as you can see there, that was, what, 172 damage it did to the warriors? So that's, that takes out a decent chunk of health, especially if they trigger multiple traps at once, and um, it, it's just quite quite helpful. And I believe this is already the last um, spawn, so... Yeah, as you could see, you, um, I was using a concept, but there really wasn't any, I don't know, very dangerous moments, so that would have probably worked out just fine without a concept. As I said, I'm mostly using them because of time constraints and um, wanting to make sure that I succeed in the quests. Um, this can definitely be done without a concept. It just helps to have one. And once you've defeated all the waves, um, I'm not sure if you need to listen to the dialogue here. Uh, there was a quest update, but that I'm not sure. I don't think I checked this time around. But as always, um, make sure your chest... your just whatever your quest says completed in the quest log before zoning out like as you can see right there so yeah at this point you can you can leave if you like um aside from that just the general advice bring aoe's use choke points bloody blah, blah you all know this by now um and yeah best of luck when you attempt this for yourself <laughs>